So now I want to look at doubling and tripling of the vocal in a bit more detail. So we're going to take a look at what you can do if you're limited by the sort of content that you have with the vocal. So perhaps you've been given a track to mix and it only comes with one vocal take rather than loads of different vocal takes that you can then take what you want. Or perhaps you had a singer into the studio and you've only managed to get like one or two different vocal takes of the chorus that were usable. So let's have a little look at some ways in which you can sort of get extra takes. Now, of course, the best way is to just record those takes then and there, like I've done with this tutorial. Obviously, I have the luxury of me being my singer, so I can just record whenever I want to. But if you don't have that and you've got a limited amount of takes, you can go back to the recording of your chorus vocal, the comped track that we left behind a little while ago. And if I unmute that lot, so these parts here were the final takes that I used for the chorus of this track. Now, if I look at that, obviously I've got this take down here, which didn't even get used. So I can use that full take for doubling, no problem at all. I just need a spare audio track and I can just drag that down onto there. And there I've got one, at least enough for one take that can be doubled. And then what I've got left out of the rest of it, I can then use for the next comped track. So if I just go through and select the different audio slices to what I previously selected, then I've got another completely different vocal take, which I can then use. So of these takes, of course, then I just follow the steps that I've already shown. We go through and do all the pitch correction and then the timing correction. And then we'd end up with, of course, two takes, which are much like my already done doubled left and right. So I'll just mute that for a second. But what happens if you could only get one extra double take out of it? Let's just pretend that we don't have that one there. And that we've only got this one vocal take. So I'm just going to show you a couple of tips to sort of maximize on this. But before I do, you just want to know that, of course, the ideal is getting extra recordings to use as double takes. If you're using a double take, like a single double take and making duplicates of it, like I'm about to show you, it gets sort of more artificial as you go down the chain. So. I'll even show you how to make a double out of just the chorus alone with no double takes whatsoever. But again, the more you sort of go down the chain or the less material you have for use, the sort of more artificial it's always going to sound. Although you can still get kind of better results than literally if you don't use any kind of doubling whatsoever. So I'm going to show you these techniques. So first of all, let's just show you on this one. So we've got our double take there. I'm going to render that to one track. And we'll just scooch that off to the side. And just for now, we'll forget about our vocal harmonies as well. So we're just going to concentrate on our main lead vocal and the double left that we've got there. So I just reset the pan on that for the moment. And if I just play that. Now, of course, I can just mix in the extra vocal as it is. which will, of course, have the effect of sort of fattening up the vocal anyway. And again, like with the parallel processing I showed, I could EQ, like say, most of the high end out of that doubled vocal and sort of use the low end of that extra vocal take to beef up the main vocal. But of course, that can be done on the main vocal with parallel processing. So what I want to achieve by having this extra double take is really what I actually achieved with the two double takes. So I'm going to show you a little trick here that you can do just to create the sort of stereo effect that I had with those extra double takes. So I'm just going to copy that vocal down onto another track. And again, I'm going to pan one hard left and the other hard right. So what I want to do here is just move this vocal take just slightly forwards of that one, not by that much, and it needs to be a very, very small amount. But if I move it forwards, so they're playing at slightly different times, it's going to have the effect of stereo widening the two vocals. I'll be waiting. So 
So that's one way you can get a sort of tripled effect, if you like, just from having one doubled vocal take. And of course, then you can apply any of the normal effects and what have you to those double vocals, just like we did with the parallel processing and just like we've done with everything else. They can be treated exactly the same. And one further thing you can do to separate these vocals even more is in your door, you can actually just detune these two takes slightly from each other. So if I go up like 14 cents on one and go down 14 cents minus 14 cents on the other, I'll be waiting for you. I'll or I could go even more extreme. And there you go, you can really hear that it's just actually having a sort of really separating effect between the two vocals. It's just another way of thickening up the vocal.